the grouchy nerd. Ah, quiet down, knuckleheads. It's time to take another look at a new hero for Fantasy Flight Games Marvel Champions. This time we're looking at Domino. Bones. Nina, no last name, was born into a government program called Project Armageddon, which sought to genetically engineer a new super soldier. She was the only survivor, having been spared by her emerging powers, the unconscious ability to affect probability in her favor. These powers are constant and psionic, but she has no active control over them. They present as very bad luck for her enemies and very good luck for her, though they also give her heightened reflexes, making her an extremely skilled fighter. She eventually escaped and stole and fought her way around the world, eventually landing a job with the NSA. But after AIM raided the base in which she was stationed, she was presumed dead, along with her husband, Milo Thurman. And in fact, neither died, but both believed the other one had. Which is... nightmare fuel. Taking the opportunity to reinvent herself, she became a mercenary and joined up with Cable and the Six Pack, which was his team. She wasn't just really into his abs. I mean, she might have been into his abs, but it was also the name of his team. The Six Pack was part of X-Force, a fringe splinter group of mutants who split from the X-Men. At some point, she was abducted by an arms dealer named Mr. Tolliver and replaced by Vanessa Carlyle, also known as Copycat, who spent kind of a long time as Domino. Cable rescued her and she eventually rejoined X-Force, but quit when the High Evolutionary temporarily neutralized all mutant powers. Since then, she's joined a new Six Pack, joined a new X-Force team, became a spy for Utopia, fought with the X-Men against the the Avengers, and eventually started her own group of mercenaries called the Posse. So let's take a look at her and see how they worked luck management into this game, and it's good. It's good. On her hero side, Domino comes in with one thwart, two attack, and three defense. She gets the X-Force and Posse traits, only nine hit points and a hand size of five. When counting resources on cards discarded from the top of your deck, count printed wild resources twice. And as an action, once per round, you can swap a card in your hand for the top card of your deck, likely to load up a wild resource to then be counted for two, or just punt a card that you don't think you're going to be able to get into play this turn, but you really want to get it into play next turn, you can put it on top of your deck so it's the first thing you draw next time when you have a whole new hand of cards to afford to pay for it. Pretty cool, but there's going to be kind of a lot more to it than that. On her alter ego side, Nina Thurman gets a recovery of three, just the mutant trait. Her hand size goes up by one, and this time as an action, you can swap a card in your hand for the top card of your discard pile, also limit once per round. Pretty fragile at nine hit points and only three recover, but you do have three defense on your hero side, so hopefully you're not going to have to recover too often, though... I mean, it's going to come up, but even more deck control. So now instead of being able to swap a card from your hand with the top card of your deck, you're swapping a card from your hand with the top card of your discard pile. So that catches allies that just went out of play or something that you just used to pay for something. Now that's right on top and you can pull that back in and then flip up to hero and put it on top of your deck if you want to draw it again. First up in her kit is Diamondback, as played by Rachel Lighton. She costs two for two health, has ones in each attack and thwart, and has the posse trait. And you can exhaust her and deal one damage to her to discard the top card of your deck and deal damage to each enemy for each resource icon discarded that way, making sure to count a wild icon as two. Starting to see, starting to see a little bit what we're going for here. It's awesome. And as for Diamondback, I mean, that's potentially huge, obviously. the hugeness is mitigated by how many enemies you have in play, but if you do have a few minions in play, that's going to hit all of the minions, softening them up, or maybe getting rid of tough status, and getting the, the villain. That could be so much damage for only one little bit of damage on her. That's good. Next up is Outlaw, in the style of Inez Temple. She costs three for three health, one attack, and one thwart. She gets the Outlaw and Posse traits and the Toughness keyword, bringing her into play with a tough status, which is okay. I mean, the ones in her stats aren't going to do a ton for you. The main thing you're getting out of that is the toughness so that she comes into play. She can take a big hit for you and then maybe take another big hit for you before she goes out of play. And then you flip down into Alter Ego and pull her out of the discard pile, put her back into your hand, and then you can put her out and play again with another tough on her. That's pretty cool. 
Two copies of A Good Workout is next. It's a two-cost attack event. As a hero, deal four damage to an enemy, then discard the top card of your deck and deal an extra point of damage for each resource icon on that card to an enemy. Doesn't have to be the same one, which is really, really good. So you can do the big damage to one enemy and then ping off a tough with the, the extra bit from flipping a card over, or you can do it all to the same enemy. Either way, that's good. Luck Be A Lady is a one cost event that we only get one copy of. Discard the top card of your deck and count the resources on it. For each energy, heal two damage from a character. Each mental, remove two threat from a scheme. Each physical, deal three damage to an enemy. And for each wild, just choose one of those. But you count wilds twice, so you get to do two of those things, or one of those things twice. Then we get two copies of Right Place, Right Time, a two cost thwart event with the superpower trait. Remove three threat from a scheme, then discard the top card of your deck and remove one more threat for each resource discarded this way. So a good workout can be on two different targets. You can do the attack on one target and then flip a card and do that damage on a different target. Not the case here. You gotta do everything on the same scheme, which is less useful. Uh, it's not as good, but it's still good. It's guaranteed to get you four threat. You might be getting five, you might be getting six. And now the whole thing goes a bit off the rails. Jackpot a resource card with all three resource icons on it. And after you discard it from the top of your deck, shuffle it back into your deck. But that's a response, not a forced response. So if you don't want to necessarily shuffle it back in, like say if you're in Halter Ego and you spend it on something and then it goes into your discard pile and you want to bring it back into your hand to spend it on something again, you can do that. You can do that. So all those abilities that flip over a card and you're hoping for a wild resource so you can count it twice, well, this one's even better than that. It's gonna get you three and you've got a lot of ways to pull it back into your hand or put it back into your deck as we're about to see. Like for instance, Pip the Pug, a one cost creature support. As an alter ego action, exhaust Pip to put one domino or one posse card from your discard pile to the top of your deck. Pip the Pug as opposed to Pip the Troll. So if there's a card that you flipped over and got to use for its wild resource, but then you also really wanted to get it into play, but you didn't have a chance to flip down to alter ego at the time to pull it off the top of the discard pile, now Pip can go and search for it and put it on top of your deck, and if you haven't switched forms yet, you can then go into hero form and pull that card off the top of your deck and f uh, swap it out with something from your hand and then put that card immediately into play. Also, Pip is a very cute name for a dog of someone named Domino. I approve. One copy of The Painted Lady is next. It's a one cost vehicle support. As a response, after you discard a card from the top of your deck, you can choose to attach that card face down to The Painted Lady. Then, as an alter ego action, you can exhaust The Painted Lady to draw one of those cards. And again, you're gonna be putting a bunch of cards directly from your deck into your discard pile, never giving you the chance to play those cards. And she's got some pretty sweet supports and upgrades. So the ability to then stick that right on Painted Lady now you found that card, you don't want to lose track of it, you don't want to waste the time having Pip look for that. It's right there on Painted Lady, so then when you do flip down to Alter Ego, Pip can go find a different card and you can get the card right there, one of the cards, on Painted Lady. It all works together very, very well. She does flip down to Alter Ego kind of a lot, like maybe every turn that you can, you're gonna be going down to Alter Ego because you're gonna get so many more cards and that much more deck manipulation, but it's very good. Then we get two copies of Domino's Pistol, a two cost weapon upgrade with the restricted keyword. As a hero and as an attack, exhaust Domino's Pistol, choose an enemy, and discard a card from the top of your deck. Deal one damage to that enemy for each resource discarded, and this attack gains range. So you don't have to worry about retaliate when you use these. Definitely enough to take off a tough status, um, but it might be significant. It could be two damage, it could be three damage if you've managed to get jackpot back on top of your deck. These can be really good. I mean, you're doing, if you have both of them out, you're definitely doing two damage. You could be doing five, I guess, if you get jackpot and a wild. Uh, that's that's awesome. 
Lucky and Good is next. It's a one-cost upgrade with a superpower trait. As a hero interrupt, when a boost card is revealed in an attack against you, exhaust Lucky and Good to ignore that card's boost icons and boost ability, then draw a new boost card. So it doesn't get you no boost card, which would, of course, be way better, but that's a lot to ask for, so getting to say no thank you to a boost of three or a boost ability that puts something into play that would be really nasty, you just, well, let me check out the next one. Could be just as bad. Then we get one copy of Lucky Break, another upgrade with the superpower trait. This one costs zero. As a hero interrupt, when you reveal an encounter card, discard Lucky Break to cancel the effects of the encounter card, then draw a new encounter card. So again, doesn't get you no encounter card, but it does let you say no thank you to Advance, or Shadow of the Past, or any number of other ones that are awful, those are just the, always the ones that are the most awful. Last is Probability Field, another superpower upgrade. This one costs two. As an interrupt, when you use a basic power, discard the top card of your deck. You get plus one to that power for each resource. And that is an anytime interrupt, so it's not just your attack, thwart, and defend. You can also do this on your recover, though do note that Nina, on her alter ego side, does not get to count wild resources twice. That's only on her hero side. The bad stuff. Nina's obligation is Memories of Armageddon. Treat your identity's printed text box as if it were blank. Then, as an alter ego, you can exhaust Nina to discard it. So that means no swapping out cards from your hand to the top of your deck or from your discard pile until you get rid of this, and you can only ever discard it. You can't get it out of the game like uh, most other heroes. This seems to be a thing with the mutants where you're just going to keep running into their obligations over and over again. Topaz is her signature minion. She's got three health and does two attack in one scheme, and she has the mutant trait. When she's revealed, check the encounter deck, discard pile, and set aside area for one copy of superpower feedback and attach it to your identity. We'll see superpower feedback in a second here, and it's pretty bad, but the rest of Topaz really isn't. She only has three health, so that's that's pretty easy to get rid of. She's, she's really not that bad. Not My Lucky Day is her signature side scheme. It starts with three threat, and when it enters play, each identity must take one damage or place two additional threat on it. Say five threat is the exact amount that right place, right time takes off of a scheme if you set it up that you discard a wild resource when you play it. Then Domino gets a second signature minion. Prototype does two attack and two scheme and has only one hit point. However, he gets plus one to his health for each luck counter on him, and when he's revealed, place one luck counter on him for each point of damage your identity has taken. But that's just the difference between your max health and your current health. It's not like they're expecting you to keep track of all damage you've taken and, and maybe healed or whatever total. It's just whatever that difference is. But two signature minions, and neither of them is her nemesis because you can't you can't pin her down. She's not ready to settle down with an enemy. She's she's free. She's wild. She's gonna fight whoever she wants to fight. And last up is that aforementioned superpower feedback. It's a condition that attaches to your identity. After you use an ability on your identity or an identity-specific card, take one damage. And as an alter ego action, discard an identity-specific card from your hand to discard this. You get very used to that swapping cards from your hand to your deck or your discard pile. You get used to it really fast, and this just makes you not want to do that. You still can. You still can do it if you need to, but you're going to be taking a damage each time you do. So that's, that's pretty bad. The good news is, though, when you swap into Alter Ego and discard a card from your hand that's identity specific, you're already, you're there, you're in Alter Ego, so you can just pull it right back out and put it into your hand, though granted you have to replace it with a different card in your hand, but still, if that's a card that you really, really want to get into play, you got options. Moving on to her aspect cards, Domino came with a justice deck. Up first is Feral, as played by Maria Kaya Santos. She has the X-Force trait. She costs four for three health and twos in her attack and thwart. And when she uses that thwart, discard the top card of your deck and deal one damage to the villain for each resource discarded this way. Outside of Domino, she's really only okay. Most heroes don't have a way to set that top card, and certainly no other heroes have an ability to count a wild icon twice, so you're just really hoping for 
one of the basic resources, or if you're playing as Hulk or uh, Captain Marvel, maybe you're hoping you get one of those, the three resource card, but she's a domino card. She's a domino card, because within domino, she's excellent. Next up is Wolfsbane in the style of Rain Sinclair. I looked that up. It's pronounced either Rain or Ronnie, because... Scottish. She's a three cost ally with three health who does one attack and two thwart and has the X-Force trait. As a response, after Wolfsbane thwarts, name a card type, then discard the top card of your deck. If that card is of the type you called, add it to your hand. And I mean, odds are pretty good you know what that card is if you're playing Domino. So if you aren't maybe going to use a card where it's going to, uh, you're hoping for a wild resource to count for two to boost right place, right time, or whatever, you just want to get that card in your hand, you can make it you can make it whatever, and you flip it over, and then you pull it back into your hand, and then you pay for it to put it out. That's all very good. Again, outside of Domino, it's fine. It's fine. Also, Star-Lord can probably make pretty good use of it, and maybe Gambit. Three copies of Team Investigation is next. It's a two-cost per identity event with the Alliance keyword, so multiple identities can help pay for it. And it removes three threat per identity from a side scheme. If you're playing with four identities or, God, three other people, then this could maybe be really, really good if you have that leadership side scheme where when you defeat it, everybody gets to find an ally from their deck or discard pile and just put it into play. Something like that would make this card phenomenal. Uh, in solo, even in two-player or two-identity, er, it's bad. Then we get one copy of our first Justice Player side scheme, Take Out the Guards. It's free to put into play and comes into play with four threat per identity. It has victory zero, and when it's defeated, each player may discard one non-elite minion. If you're playing somebody who can do a whole lot more thwarting than attacking, which if you're playing with the Justice aspect is very likely, then this is pretty nice. You can get rid of an, uh, a minion that's giving you a hard time as long as it's not elite, though it is worth noting that both Domino and uh, Cable, who can take this no matter what aspect he's in, neither of their minions, neither of their signature minions uh, have elite. Uh, Domino has two minions, of course, neither of those are elite, and for some reason, Strife isn't elite? I don't get that one, but that's not the point. This will take him out. Next up is Atlas Bear, as played by Shunqua. She's a three-cost basic ally with three health, the posse and Wakanda traits, and ones in each attack and thwart. As an action, exhaust Atlas Bear to look at the top card of a player deck. If that card is an event, you may deal one damage to Atlas Bear to add that card to your hand. Again, works really well with Domino and fine with everybody else. Domino can put a card specifically out that she knows Atlas Bear will be able to see, oh, it's an event, let me bring that back, now I've got an extra card in my hand. Uh, or you can just see what's next, because you only have to give her that damage if you put it into your hand. So if you just need to know what is the next thing that I'm going to flip over, is it going to do two damage or one damage or three damage or whatever, you can take a look at it without giving Atlas Bear any damage. Then we get White Fox, AKA Amy Han, another three cost basic ally with the posse trait. She has three hit points and does one thwart and one attack, and as a response, after she's discarded from the top of your deck, put her into play. Absolutely insane for Domino. So if you know you're about to play a card that flips over a card, you just stick her on top and then you get her in play for free. But then there's also the cards that dig through your deck looking for a specific type of card. Weapon X digs for identity specific cards. Uh, Call for Aid digs for an Avenger. No Quarter digs for a red card. If you run into White Fox while digging for any of those other types of cards, she just goes into play. Next is one copy of The Posse, a two-cost basic event which you can only play if you control at least three Posse characters. As a hero action, heal one damage from each Posse member and ready them. I mean, what do you say to that? That's amazing. That's obviously Domino, uh, but then Diamondback, who can do the damage to all enemies, or uh, Atlas Bear, who might be getting you an event into your hand again if she does another if she heals a damage and readies she can then do that again 
Uh, that's all very, very good. Then we get a basic player side scheme, Super Power Training. It costs just one to play and comes into play with three threat per identity. It has victory zero, and when it's defeated, each identity can search their deck and discard pile for an identity-specific upgrade and put it into play. That's super good for anybody who has a weapon that they really want to get into play or anything like uh, Hawk Hawkeye's Quiver. If that thing is buried in the bottom of your deck and you don't get to it early, you're gonna have a bad time, but this, you're hopefully you run into one of them. But outside of Hawkeye, I mean, Venom's got his multi-gun, Domino's got her pistols, uh, Rocket's got his everything. Then we get three copies of Dig Deep, a basic resource card which gives you a wild and has a response. When this card is discarded from the top of your deck, add it to your hand. Off the charts, Bonkers good for Domino. Good in all of the same ways White Fox is, meaning that if you're playing with somebody, you're taking uh, Weapon X, Call for Aid, all those ones we talked about before, uh, take this. Just take it. Do it. Just do it. Because then they're going to come into your hand, and then you can use that to pay for the card that you just dug through your deck for. Yeah. Last is three copies of another Bonkers Good card for Domino, Sharpshooter, a two-cost upgrade but max one per player. As a hero interrupt, when you make a ranged attack, discard the top card of your deck to make that attack deal one additional damage for each resource icon on that card. And it doesn't exhaust when you use it, so you can use it after both pistol attacks, and you should use it after both pistol attacks. It feels really good. And of course, there are other heroes who have ranged attacks who can make use of this, though no one else is going to be able to make as much use of the card that you flip over if it's a wild resource, blah, 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 blah. So it's really, really good in Domino. It's good in some other people, but it's really good in Domino. Uh-oh, I might have a new favorite hero. She's so fun. The deck manipulation is something that we have not seen anything like, and it's really, really good and fun, and you're just constantly doing stuff. She does want to flip down between Alter Ego and Hero kind of a lot. All of her cards, I haven't mentioned this, all of her cards, except for Jackpot, have a wild resource. So you're going to have plenty of wild resources in your deck for when you're flipping things over. And then you, of course, add in Dig Deep and anything else you can get that gives you a wild resource so that you are almost guaranteed to pull either a wild resource or Jackpot. And then once you find Jackpot, you use all your cards to just keep that on top of your deck or in your hand. She's a lot of fun. And then she has these, these amazingly synergistic cards that are basic sharpshooter. Freaking sharpshooter is a basic card, so you can take that with any aspect. You can always have that in a domino deck, and you should always have that in a domino deck. Atlas Bear as well. These cards that should have been part of her kit, and I don't know, they couldn't fit it in, so they just said, take them, just to have them as basic, so you can put them in no matter what. Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter. You can use leadership to find those allies that do the things. Diamondback, in particular, can be a lot of fun. Of course, Atlas Bear, who's sort of screening your calls for you, screening that top card if you're not able to set it or if you just want to see what it would be to pull it back. Justice, obviously, is really good. She came with Justice. Protection's really good. She has three defense naturally, um, so being able to take those big hits for her allies to be able to then let the allies do their thing is a lot of fun. You are going to be flipping to Alter Ego a lot, so have some ways to get rid of threat, uh, but she's she's just so much fun. Also in leadership, Beast is a great take because he can find you jackpot, and once you find jackpot, you just want to do everything you can to keep that right at the top of your deck or in your hand. And that's going to do it for Domino because if I keep going, there will be more examples of how good she is, and this video will quickly get off the rails. Uh, so we're just going to pull the plug on it. Get off my lawn. <laughs> The Grouchy Nerd.